It's time to travel to the next room with Jane Asher, an exploration of the bigger picture surrounding life on Earth and what follows. Now, here's your host, Jane Asher, on Empower Radio. Well, happy Monday. It's so good that you're joining me. I am really, really looking forward to this show. Um, Probably a couple months ago, right when I was just kind of getting my groove with the next room, um, someone had turned me on to this woman and showed me her Facebook page. And I'm like, holy cow, that's a lot of grief. Um, This woman is literally uh, the grief goddess of the Internet. Her name is Jan Warner. She has written a book called Grief Day by Day, and her Facebook page is Grief Speaks Out. And I kid you not, people, if you need somewhere to go, I urge you to go there now because it's phenomenal. There's 2.4 million fans on this Facebook page, which kind of blows me away. But when you go visit the page, you get it because it's authentic. It's real people grieving great loss, their loss. So without further ado, Jan Warner, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Thank you, and thank you for your kind words about me and about Grief Speaks Out. Well, you know, Jan, here's what we have to just get to this right away. So um, your husband passed away, and yeah. in your, I'm assuming, your incredible state of, of grief, how do you create a Facebook page? Like, what? how did this all come to be? Because that's, I mean, come on, that's phenomenal that you have 2.4 million fans who weigh in and go to your page. How did that happen? Well, I didn't start with 2.4 million people, and I didn't start with a Facebook page. My husband was older than I was, mm-hmm. and I, I really thought that when he died, I would be sad, and I would miss him, and I would go on. I okay. had no idea. I, I, w- I would feel, like, totally destroyed, like, a uh, tornado had just come into my being and blown it to smithereens. So hmm. I started by thinking that he would somehow with angel wings come down and pull me up. And then he didn't. Hmm. And then I didn't die. And then I thought about killing myself. And there's some pretty oh. weird stuff on the Internet about how to do that. But I couldn't give people the grief that I had. So hmm. then it was... My husband was kind of a, a, a thuggy guy when he was young, and he liked a saying that we were each other's raison d'etre. So my reason for being was gone. Hmm. But he was a recovering alcoholic. Well, maybe not gone, but gone physically. Um, gotcha. <laughs> so he was a recovering alcoholic that had given up his life to being available to other addicts and alcoholics. And I thought, I can be available to grieving people, and if I reach one, I'm honoring him, and that gives me a reason. So I started with a blog, and then somebody said, why don't you start a Facebook page? And I I know it's me. I do it every day. I post seven posts every day, and people tell me that I help them a lot. But I can't believe that I found a common language where somebody will message me from India or Vietnam or Algeria or Australia or the United States, and also people on the page support each other because it's gotten so big now. I went on the other day, and some of the questions had between 50 and 90 responses, so I can no longer read it and respond to everybody. But the main thing is whatever you're feeling is what you're supposed to be feeling, and you're okay. I mean, that's the main message of the page. Grief, it seems like in every country, is not respected. So people need a Facebook page to simply say, I've missed this person for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and have people say, I understand how you feel, not move on. Right. That's be- it, it's beautiful. And here's what I know from going on the page, and I've spent a lot of time on it because um, I'm always around social media. It's super authentic. Um, there's, it, it, it's not fancy. You don't have the perfect little memes on there. You're not creating this, uh, facade. You're really, truly, it's pain. It's, it's my pain. It's Bob's pain. It's John's pain. It's Larry's pain. It's Sarah's pain. And it's really, you can tell that it's, it's the real deal. Like it's a community of people that are suffering great loss, but no one's telling them, how to do it, or that it's wrong. 
And I love that because grief is so unique to every single person on the planet. Yeah, I never thought that I would live my life on Facebook. And I do judge, <laughs> you know, I am aware. Like, for example, if I, I, every day I ask a question. So if the question is, what's the craziest thing you've ever done? Or did you ever consider killing yourself? I always remind people that they're on Facebook and it's an open page. Mm-hmm. But people are willing to come and talk about because they know that they'll be supportive. Um, I go through the page. You're not allowed to give advice. You have to share your own experience. You're not allowed to judge anybody. So mm-hmm. if somebody's lost an animal or their house or their husband or their daughter or whoever they've lost, we take their grief seriously. Yeah. And you can't say, well, you have to do this. You can say, I did this and it helped. So, and that's based also on the AA model. So that comes from my husband. But I, yeah. you know, I started like everybody else trying to get a hundred likes and thought a thousand was respectable. And instead I wound up with this amazing supportive community. That's a worldwide community. Yeah. You've mentioned AA a few times and I know quite a bit about the program and it's, uh, I know it's based on anonymity. So, um, it is a great program though, just the the basis of what their belief system is, higher power, and really finding strength within. So I love that you've kind of modeled your grief um, after that program because that program has helped countless millions and millions and millions of people um, to move forward. I think maybe we all need a safe space. So you've created this safe space. So now you have this Facebook page. Did you, did the book Was the book birthed out of the Facebook space? Because um, the book is called Grief Day by Day, and it's almost somewhat of a a workbook. Um, I'm laughing because I was going to be the great American writer, and I never did that. And I received, because I have 2.4 million likes, I received an email one day from a publisher who said, we'd like to consider you to write a book, for writing a book. And I went, oh, (laughs) I have to do this. I have to just make the phone call. I don't have to write the book. I have to do one step at a time. It's being handed to me on a plate. So they actually gave me an outline, which at the beginning I didn't like, but now I actually really like because there's different topics for each week and there's quotes and comments for each day of that week. And it ranges from despair, confusion, all the things that you feel with grief to what I call resting places like hope and faith and beauty. So you can start at the beginning and read it all the way through and do all the exercises. There's an exercise for each. I call them grief whisperer exercises for each week. Or you could just go, everything is so black. I want to read something about hope or Mm -hmm. I'm so confused. I wonder if anybody else is confused when they're grieving. Oh, look, there's a section on confusion. So I, I find it it's actually a useful, I had a I had an experience where somebody wanted to meet me. I'm still not used to being that person. And when she brought the book, it had all these little notes in it, and it was mm. obviously well read. And it, it meant a lot to me that yeah. I could actually, it's the most unbearable thing to have somebody you love that's central to your life die or transition, whatever you want to call it so that I can somehow bring comfort to people is really uh, a grace point in my life. Isn't that beautiful? And, you know, you did not, you know, as a young child say, I'm going to be a grief expert. Um, I love this. This is where the authenticity of who you are, Jan Warner, is coming shining through. You know, you didn't set your sights to do this. It found you, you know, through your grief, through Artie passing, you needed to fill that, that painful void. I'm just guessing. And through that came all this wonderful, you know, I mean, I love that you're helping other people. So the name of the book is Grief Day by Day. Jan Warner is the author, just in case you're looking for it. Um, I'm scrolling through it now on my laptop and it is really cool because it breaks it down into week by week and different things. And if you don't want to just sit and read it in one chunk. You can do what Jan suggested, which I love to um, refer to as book dipping. You pick it up, <laughs> you thumb through, and you say, yep, that's what I need today. I need to read about fear. I need to read about whatever it is. Um, and this woman has been through it, and obviously uh, I love that you've put this together for everyone. 
All right. So you're spending your life on Facebook. Let's, I'm going to take a little side trip here. Um, I would like to know, Jan, what is your, what do you feel is next? Um, I know, and, and my listeners know where I'm coming from, obviously the next room. Um, so I have a different take on what is next and it's not what I know, it's what I feel. So what do you feel is next in this life experience after, you know, we peel off this so-called meat suit? Oh, what is next in the next world? Okay. We, in our family, we call it the great unknown. Mm -hmm. My feeling is that it's so different from anything we can imagine that Mm. if you have a sense of humor, the first thing you do is laugh. I, I, I'm a little skeptical, but I, I believe that it wouldn't make sense for our journey not to continue. My Mm. husband used to say we were connected before we met and we'll always be together. Right. I, I, but we won't have a body. So that's what you said, the meat suit. So I picture us as bouncing energy balls. But part of grief is, you know, I love his eyes and his face and, you know, the way it feels when he holds me. And I don't know if there's anything that corresponds to that in the next world. But mm. I don't have to worry about that because I'll be dead, too. So um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, that's, that's, that's just my opinion. Uh, right. I would like to have, when I mean, we have eternity, I would like to have 15 minutes with God to say, why did this happen? And he's got charts and graphs, and he goes, well, you, this is how it fit into the major plan, so it really upset <laughs> you, but actually it was okay. <laughs> so I don't know if that I, happens. That's great. I have never, ever really had the visual of God with charts and graphs, so that makes me laugh. Um, good. I like that. The great unknown. Um, and that's like to... really where the, the show came from a good friend of mine. We discussed these kind of things all the time. And, and she just said, you know, Janie, I just think that, um, you know, people have this heaven nirvana, what's next their, their vision of it, or whether we recycle and come back in. But she goes, I like to think of it as that we're just in the next room. They're still here. But right. we can't see them. And I love that. And so that's, you know, I've got a props to Budgie because that's my little girlfriend who, you know, gave me the name of uh, of this show. So, And I'd like to tell you a little story because it's my favorite one, even it'll be 10 years in July since Artie died, which is hard to get used to. Um, very soon after he died, I went to the U- our local UPS store, and there was a very serious man that worked there that just knew us as customers. He wasn't a mm-hmm. friend. We never saw him socially. Steel rim glasses, balding, and I just bought two boxes, and he said, let me carry them to your car. And I said, oh, no, it's okay. I can do it. He said, no, no, I really need to carry them to your car. And I went, okay. And when we got to my car, he looked at me, and he said, your husband appeared to me and told me that you have to know how much he loves you. You have to know that he still loves you. And I looked at him, and I laughed, and I said, that must have been a heck of a dream. And he said, no, I'm serious. It was an apparition. He came to me, please know how much he loves you. And at that point, I started to cry. But it's those kind of things that make me think that there has to be something afterwards, because if he was my friend then I could understand him making up a story to make me feel better. There was absolutely no reason for this comparative stranger to come with to me with this apparition had he not had one. Wow. So. I just, I want to tell you what just happened to me. So you're telling me this story and I'm a big fan of what's next, obviously, because I'm fascinated with death and dying and grieving and near death and after death experiences, the whole shebang, obviously, because I have the show. Um, I just got full body rush when you told me that. And I I think that it took an enormous amount of courage for this man to tell you that, because how many times in society, um, you know, it's like, this is a desk, this is a car, you know, we're told, you know, solid matter and, and we're not, you know, we're kind of looked on as a little goofy when we have this greater perspective or maybe a little deeper connection to what's next or beyond. So kudos to him for speaking up. And when you started crying, what did, how did he react? He just stood there with me. I mean, he was a very, this was a serious mission for him. So again, you know, I don't know, but, and he's not the only one. 
I call them, for me, I call them taps on the head. Sometimes Mm -hmm. I will feel as though something is coming from outside my brain that my husband is saying to me. And luckily I have friends (laughs) that I can say, well, Artie says, and they don't say, well, that's (laughs) stupid. They listen. And I'll give you an example. Somebody was telling me how I bring Artie alive and how charismatic I am because they felt like they know him, even though, et cetera, and so forth. And I said, well, uh, I just got a tap on the head. Artie says, I shouldn't get all the credit. He's the one that's charismatic. So, <laughs> did I make I like that up? Artie. I don't know. But it, I love so, that. yeah, you know, somebody once asked me, "Do you joke with your dead?" And I thought that was a wonderful question because, yeah. yeah. Well, I I'm just going to you know I'm I'm also I love marketing, so I'm just going to tell you right now, you may have to start doing hashtag Artie says. And do some fun (laughs) posts. I'm not kidding. You know, when you get that tap on the head. That's a tap on the head. He's going, why didn't you think of that before now? (laughs) I love that. I just think that that is so incredible. All right. So Artie passed in July, coming up uh, on 10 years in July. What day? Uh, July. And it's good. I, I don't know the exact day anymore. I think it was the 13th. Okay. All right. So it's 13 years. Tell me Uh, what. 10 years. What's that, hon? It's the 13th, but 10 years. That's right. Okay, 13th, but coming up on 10 years. Tell me what you do or what you've done to, um, obviously, besides writing this fabulous book, Grief Day by Day, Jan Warner, and the the Facebook page, Grief Speaks Out. Aside from that, what do you do to honor Artie? Um, Have you done anything special um, to honor who he is? Do you have an Artie shrine? Just, Just talk to me about him. In the beginning, I had a shrine, and it was big, and then it got smaller. And now I have pictures of him around. I have a a bench, a plaque on a bench in Central Park because I live in New York City. Oh, that's great. But I I realize my life is really the shrine now, is that the the work I do is to honor him. And I also, Mm -hmm. on important days, and I didn't get this, this wasn't my own idea, but I go on Facebook and I ask people to do an act of kindness for themselves or for somebody mm. else to keep a smile going. And I put a, his picture up. And there are a lot of people like me. I think that one of the best things that you can do after somebody you love dies is two things. One is to show up where life is happening, hoping it will seep back in because it might. And also to help other people. Even if you can't right. leave the house yet, you can go on Facebook and write supportive things to people that are struggling. Right. So um, that that that's it. So uh, it, it, to me, so a lot of people have honored people that have died by creating Facebook pages or um, doing yeah. some kind of charity work in in their loved one's name. Yeah, that's beautiful. You know, I think I may have sat on uh, Artie's bench in Central Park when I was there just this last spring. It's fun. I- it's it, it was funny because I have a picture, an old picture on Facebook where. Um, a friend of mine who's a poet just randomly with a hot dog and a friend sat down on a bench. And when she stood up, it <laughs> said, um, it, isn't that funny? It says, Mrs. Mr. Dazzle and, and Mrs. Panache, I love you. You're my heart always. And she realized that they had accidentally sat on her bench. So, oh, yeah. my gosh. I lo- <laughs> no, there is no such thing as an accident. I don't I don't believe in random acts. I just think that that uh, everything is just this divine, cool, energetic vibe that we've got going on. Well, this is just so much fun. I am I'm thrilled to be speaking with you. If you just tuned in um, tonight or today, I should say my my guest is Jan Warner. She has written the book. She's the author of Grief Day by Day. Um, it's cool because it takes you through everything. I mean, becoming a grief whisperer. There are things about exhaustion. There is um, chapters about everything that you can possibly imagine. The anger, because that's a big part of grief. Uh, great, great book to just pick up, thumb through, do a little book dipping, and and maybe fill your soul with something or pass it on to someone. Uh, also, too, um, her Facebook page is, is really uh, super authentic. It's called Grief Speaks Out. You know, give her some, not that she needs more likes, but what the heck, let's get her to 3.4 <laughs> million instead of 2.4. So what what's next here, grief goddess of the internet? What, what you know, you want to help people. Are you happy in what has become your life because of already passing close to 10 years, you know, ago? Did you, I mean, obviously you never envisioned this, 
are you in a good space to be this grief goddess? I, I call it being fully alive with grief. And I, I like, I use the model of a sunflower, which comes off somebody else's or a layer cake. The part that misses my husband is always angry, sad, confused, mm. annoyed, lonely. But I've got so many magical things around it. So I still have times when I totally fall apart or I don't see any reason for getting out of bed, but then I do. So actually what I decided was after I wrote the book, some opportunities opened up for me to write for other people, and I decided to turn them down. That supporting people on Grease Speaks Out seems to be enough, and the book, and promoting that. One of the things I do is I will send free copies of the book to people and ask them to distribute it distribute mm-hmm. it. And mm-hmm. I love it when people buy books for other people, but also, like, for example, I leave a book in my doctor's office's waiting room and somebody mm-hmm. always takes it. So next time I go in, I'm going to leave 10 because I want people to avail themselves of it. But yeah. also I hope that if they take one, that then they'll buy three. Um, I love that. But it, so I, I, I feel like what I'm doing is enough because it does require me to always dip back into the painful part and to read. I won't tell stories, but when people say it's all good, it frustrates me because really terrible things happen to really kind people. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to process that and to be present with people who tell me stories that nobody wants to hear because they really are tragic. Um, There's like normal grief. I mean, they're just like, you know, my husband got older and then he died and it was really sad and horrible for me, but he didn't just, you know, he wasn't two years old and died. So there's all all kinds of levels. And when you asked me what was happening next, I I actually have an interesting answer to that because on March 5th, I'm going to go to the Kurdish part of Iraq. And I have a friend in a city called Suleimania who teaches gender studies, who's asked me to do a reading from the book in Iraq. So... My life is full of moments that I never thought would happen. When my husband died, I thought it was over. And what I found out was I have accomplished a lot. I have a seven-year-old granddaughter I adore. I have a wonderful daughter. I have friends. I've just accomplished things beyond which I imagined. And I'm a really very ordinary person. And I, like with the book, it's like, okay, I'm going to get up now. Okay, maybe I'm going to get up in a half hour. Okay, now it's two o'clock. I'm going to start. <laughs> but once you start, you can you don't know where you're going to end up. So right. that's that's I kind love of the that. way I am. Yeah. Well, you're ordinary, but yet you are um, super heart centered, and you have a beautiful energy about you. And I I just can't help but thinking that perhaps Artie is helping this and guiding this along. I mean, in in this great loss which it doesn't matter how many years it's been, it is still painful. And so that's the big thing. The big misnomer about grief is, ah, you know, you get over it. No, you don't. Um, I don't feel, and I, I, I just feel like we grieve different ways. Everyone grieves differently. But perhaps Artie is there helping this and guiding you along so that, you know, he helped so many people in his lifetime. And now through him leaving and going to the next room, you are now, you know, Jan, you're able to help other people. I definitely believe he's guiding me every step of the way. And if you believe that, you can accept that. If you're an atheist and you don't believe that, so your loved one is still guiding you every step of the way because they're in your heart and your memory. Yeah, there so you go. I believe that he's physically helping me, that he's around and I should call on him for help. But, you know, I tell people that, you don't have to believe in an afterlife to believe that your loved one is still with you. It makes it bearable for me. The idea right. of him not being around anywhere in any form is unbearable. So yeah. it doesn't matter to me if it's true or not. But I, I love talking to people like you that, that whose faith in something next is there. Yeah, Because I, I call this the waiting room. I call my life decorating the waiting room, which I found other people also call it that because I'm waiting for the great, I call it the great party in the sky too, is, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've already, you know, instead of my parents, I'd like to have, um, Cary Grant meet me when I go through the white light, but I don't know <laughs> if that's going to happen. <laughs> the great party in the sky with Cary Grant. Right. <laughs> For 
those I of you who that. don't know, Cary Grant was George Clooney, only better in uh, the 50s and 60s. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm 68. So I love it. My That's fantastic. Are like, nobody well, knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah. I am just absolutely delighted that you join me tonight and the show is almost over. I keep saying tonight because who knows when this airs because it's downloadable and it airs all the time. So bad habit. So anyway, um, I'll tell you what, Grief Goddess, you're going to have to come back on the show. And I'm thinking maybe what I'd like to do is I'll purchase, um, you know, maybe five books from you. And then if you would autograph them for me, just sign them and then I'll give them out on the show. Um, oh, that would be that, wonderful. I would love to do that. And then that way it's it's no, you know, you're not taking anything out of your pocket, but then I can turn, you know, five awesome people onto a fabulous book and it's autographed, which is great. So we'll and arrange also, that after we get off the air. Um, tonight's show or today's show, Jan Warner, Grief Day by Day is the name of the book. The Facebook page is Grief Speaks Out. Um, if you have any questions for her, go to the, the Facebook page because you literally can connect with 2.4 million other people who are grieving and you will find some solace and some support and love. Um, I can't thank you enough, Jan. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for doing the show. I appreciate it. Join Jane again next week for The Next Room on Empower Radio as she examines the beliefs, traditions, and personal evidence of connection with those who have moved on to The Next Room. 